So, the world is ending. Hey PRs, you probably clicked on this video because you just watched Pandemic and now you're struggling to get your brain straight, you're not sure what's going on with the world, everything seems super sketchy right now. Seriously though, you probably did watch Pandemic if you're watching this video. If you didn't, good for you, good for staying away from that kind of stuff. If you did, good for you, good for wanting to know more about that kind of stuff. Um, if you're a Christian and you're just trying to get some more perspective on this, welcome. If you're not a Christian and you're not sure um, what worldview to trust in this process and what's going on and everything and that video confused you like most of us then welcome join the club I watched Plandemic like the day after it came out and I think just like everybody I noticed that it was getting spammed on social media there's an interview I don't even know his name right now but um, I'll put him up on the screen he interviews Judy Mikovits or Mikovits who is a research scientist um, and her goal is to prove how Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is the lead of the coronavirus um, task force, and she's basically making these claims that Anthony Fauci is totally corrupt. Um, he's he's you know just wants to see millions of people die so that he can sell his drugs and make billions of dollars off of them, and he wants to push a, a one-world vaccine one day that he's going to invent. But up until that point, um, he is going to stop and halt any procedure that's working and also ramp up the death claims to fear monger people to get them to believe um, and do as he pleases. That's kind of a lot to take in. It's clearly a conspiracy theory. There's no way around it. And and don't, don't stop and think, okay, well, because it's a conspiracy theory, that means that it's immediately false. Well, no. You know, Watergate was a conspiracy theory. Right? But it was a real event that actually took place. It started out as a conspiracy theory. Make sure that when you're listening to it, you're taking it with a grain of salt. Plandemic definitely has some disguised agenda behind it. Um, and ultimately, it falling in the category of conspiracy theory and being pushed away so quickly is actually something that you should be really concerned about, not something that you should look at and go, oh, wow, this is, they're hiding the truth. No. Ultimately, I'm not going to say that I sit here and I trust Facebook and everything that they do, and I'm not going to say that I trust Google through YouTube and everything that they do. I don't really believe in that kind of a censorship. I like the, the true freedom of speech even on the internet and even on private sites like that. But that being said, you need to realize, like, ultimately these sites aren't going to be completely against your best interests, you know? And yes, they might want to push some specific political agendas and stuff like that, but just try and wrap your head around this idea that there's a conspiracy so big out there that not only is the president involved, not only are their entire task force involved, a significant portion of the world's doctors are also involved, and now these large tech companies are also involved in covering up this conspiracy. Supposedly, at that point, there needs to be enough money in everybody's pocket from this conspiracy to make it worth it and as well as every single person involved needs to stay quiet that's kind of crazy we're like months into this pandemic and the whole world agrees that it's a thing think of the watergate scandal like a dozen people involved was too many for the for the truth not to leak out and now you're thinking about fa you know hundreds if not thousands of people being involved and they're somehow keeping it all under wraps and even if it is leaking out, it's just now leaking out months and months later. Uh, seems like a far fetch. Okay, so now you have this doctor who personally I've never heard of. I'm not part of the medical science community, so I think that it's kind of reasonable that I haven't heard of this doctor, Judy Mikovits. But I think it's also important to recognize, like, if this was somebody who's totally outspoken and, like, is well-known and has credibility, wouldn't you have maybe heard of them? Or at least people who are somewhat associated might have heard of her? Now, basically, she's going to come through, come into this, into this interview and make all these wild claims. But here's where I want to start. This is the first section. I'll put a clip of it. So you made a discovery that conflicted with the agreed-upon narrative. <laughs> Correct. And so what did they charge you with? Nothing. But you were in jail. I was held in jail with no charges. They said, if you don't find the notebooks, if you don't find the material, which was not in my possession, but planted in my house. As if you took intellectual property from the laboratory. 
Is yes. that correct? It was, it was intended to appear as if I took confidential material names and intellectual property from the laboratory. And I could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I didn't. Dr. Mikovits makes this big claim, and this is what everything else hinges on for the entirety of the truth that she could be spouting out, that she was arrested for no good reason and frame her and she was held with no charges and dismissed from the science or disgraced from the scientific medical science community. The truth that we all have come to know is that Judy Mikovits was fired from a research facility and then was caught stealing stuff from that facility afterwards, like certain notes and proprietary information afterwards, and that she was charged on that and arrested for that. So basically she just fell from, you know, fell from the grace of the community all at once and everybody in the science community just agreed that she wasn't a valid uh, source for information. She's disputing all these claims. She's disputing the claim that she was arrested. She's disputing the claim that, that that she stole stuff. She's disputing the claim that her research is untrustworthy. She's disputing the claim that, you know, her research was unreplicatable because that was the big reason that her research methods were found to be untrustworthy is that they w could not be reproduced by other um, laboratories and other researchers. What it comes down to is that she comes to this point where she says, I did not do this bad thing. And to prove it, I'm gonna tell you that I did not do this thing. It's like very circular reasoning. You catching my drift here? It's kind of some crazy stuff to really come to this conclusion that to prove that your word is good, you're gonna say that your word is good. If she had given any credible um, proof to the fact that she was framed, I mean, that would blow the lid off on this thing and you could actually potentially um, begin to trust her other claims because once you're proving one thing is false and once you're proving one of the partial pieces of the conspiracy everything else kind of falls into place after that but she never did that so if it is truly false and if the you know claims behind it don't actually have uh, any weight to them then what is the purpose for all of this why would people do this well I think that it kind of all draws back to money and when we look at Judy Mikovits's claims, like her whole thing is that she um, was claiming that everybody else was doing things for money. And let me tell you something. In college, I wrote a research paper on opioid abuse. And I'll tell you something. Big pharma, companies like Pfizer that create, you know, a large percent of the world's drugs, they are not trustworthy. There are some serious conspiracies about them that are actually true. So, yes, I do believe that, you know, Big pharmaceutical companies will create drugs and are actually leaning on making money off of people's deaths and injuries and stuff like that. I mean, point in blank, opioid abuse, one of the leading causes of death in the United States and even in the world. But these companies that are, that are you know, saying that they're doing good for humanity are also the ones that are pumping out opioids and pressuring doctors to overprescribe them. And that's proven. That's not just something that is a conspiracy. Or when we look at like, insulin a life saving essential drug and it's the prices are incredibly high judy mikovitz was claiming the purpose is is that anthony fauci wanted to make a lot of money off of this and that he did the same thing back in the 80s and 90s with hiv with the hiv aids pandemic and that he's just at to do it again and that's his whole goal here um first and foremost one of the big claims was like, oh, the numbers are being inflated for coronavirus for fear mongering. But then you look up on YouTube and you can find a clip of doctors and I'll put a clip really quickly of a doctor basically saying, listen, Medicare offers $13,000 per patient that is diagnosed with coronavirus to the facility that's holding that patient. So yes, we're going to be pretty liberal, liberal with our diagnoses. That's not leading people on or anything like that that's not putting out a con that's not a conspiracy that's just how business works they have a clip of the two bakersfield doctors why are they having us say COVID on everything well because we you get paid more when you diagnose COVID. we already know that how does that prove this whole thing is some big fauci conspiracy theory even though doctors take an oath to do no harm i mean they're still business people they still want to make money off of what they're doing and they still want their practices to grow financially i think that the truth is that at the end of the day rather than it being all these other doctors who are the ones who are are being 
you know, mischievous, trying to make their money in a wrong way. It's actually Judy Mikovits who's trying to do that through this way. She's trying to come out and blow up a huge conspiracy, make these crazy claims without any um, backing behind them. Ultimately, so that she can sell some books and maybe some small portion of the scientific community will accept her research again and she can begin um, doing that again. I mean, I could imagine that if you put so much time and effort into your career just for it to fall apart like hers has, that you're going to want to spend the rest of your life grasping at that and getting that back. Obviously, this is a pretty bad attempt at doing that. Make sure that you guys educate yourself. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more responses to conspiracy theory videos or things like that. Um, like this video if you've made it this far. Subscribe to us for more information like this and more videos um, every single week.